Hello, welcome to my first tutorial video on flip fluids. Uh, today we'll be working on making this video. So, we're going to start with making the obstacle where the water is going to stay in. So to do this, you have to go into the flip fluids, the object, and click inverse. That prevents any fluid from falling out of the cube. And then you're going to make the inflow object. So just make another cube. and then shrink it down to however much you want it it's up to you flip fluids inflow and I kind of want it to spray out so I'm gonna turn up this one to at least three something like that now you're good and now you just have to parent this one to the outside so you click that Control P and it's parented. Now that we have that done, we can move it out of the way and it's time to work on the actual map. So let's get rid of this light while we're at it and let's put a cube and let's make this one a little bit bigger. So Control Z or Shift Z to stay on the on both axes. Just make it a little bigger and then edit mode face select and then put it up uh, I think I'll put it a little bit further up there you go and I kinda want it to slide down so I'm gonna put control R a loop cut right here uh, exit and now select this line right here and bring it down so it kinda slides down and now that you have that just add a couple more cube pillars uh, this one I kind of just leave it the way it is I think I might make it a little bit bigger like that and put it closer I want it to fall on so right there and you just have to duplicate it a couple more times and you should be good and Alright, that, that looks pretty good. And now, since I'm pretty lazy, I don't feel like animating this, I'm going to use a rigid body. So, click on the cube. It already seems positioned enough. Go into rigid body. And that's it. And then for the rest, just do rigid body passive. And it's also, in case it falls onto the floor, you're going to add a plane right there. And then give that also a rigid body. And so these are also going to collide with the water. So let's give that an obstacle as well. last one there you go once that's done you're kind of set up you could preview it and play there it is so that's what's gonna happen now you want that to be saved onto the to the system so to save the rigid body animation so the fluid would match with it you go into right here on this tab and then you see rigid body world open that up and the catch and then I think I'll make this a little bit longer so around 300 frames increase this one as well there you go bake all dynamics and it should work just fine okay now after that's done we're gonna work on the domain so where everything's gonna stand in um, 
I think I'll make it this steep and increase the width length of it uh, not that long there should be fine it's gonna end up pretty far away so that's right there should be all right and uh, lift all the way up there that should be good and then make this a domain We're gonna work with these settings in a little bit. Um, something I forgot to do was enable export animation right here. On that one and the, the little cube inside of it. So if you hold Z, you could go into this menu and then go into wireframe, click on the cube inside and do the same thing. And also constant fluid velocity that one's pretty good as well. Keep it like that and then just hold Z and go back to solid. Uh, for this one, we want to do to make it invisible is uh, go over here and show and render, click that off. And then for viewport, we want it to just show the wireframe so we still know it's there. So just in the display as, click wire, and there. It should be vis uh, invisible uh, in the render but not the viewport. After we have that, we could set up the settings first. So in the debug area, something I like to do is enable this one always. So you could see where the liquid is going to collide in, like the barrier. It's good for setting up the ground, but since we're not, uh, the ground's already a collision, we're just gonna leave it like that. Um, nothing in the advanced settings. Uh, you can set up the materials now, but I recommend doing it later. I already know what I want. Ocean 1. Uh, this one would be foam, bubbles, and spray. There we go. And skipping presets, or presets, world. And for world, all you have to do is enable surface tension, enable sheeting effect, because we're going to work with water. And... Whenever you're going to work with water, turning these on would make the water look better and more realistic. For the white water, just enable this one. That should be easy. Uh, display settings. Right here uh, is the size of the particle. And never forget to click this one as well. So your, game, uh, your blender doesn't crash. This one, I want to set it to 0 0.01, or else it's going to be too big or too small. Uh, that should be the final thing. And now in the fluid catch, if you don't have an external drive that you want your catch to be at, just click make, uh, make absolute, and that would save it. But for me, I want it to be saved on my hard drive. So I want to... Go hard drive D and then make a new folder. There we go. Now in here, I'll save it there. And that should be the last thing. Now set up this. I want it 30 frames. The resolution, I'll leave it at 65 because we're still previewing it. And that should be good for now for now now it's going to export the animation and it should start baking the fluid now um this would be a really good time to save it uh, save it with my falling cubes i like to organize my files just to save time And now this would also be a good time to set up your materials. So go into the material display and I kind of just want these to have a metallic look to it. So new object, metallic, 
and uh, while I'm at it I'll turn these on as well I'm not going to use the EV but I like to turn it on just to preview now that I have that I'll just set the rest because I want it to have the same color this all up to you the ground I want it to also be metallic but a darker metallic and last but not least set up the background environmental textures um, I got all my HDRIs from HDRI Haven uh, this one is one of my favorite ones to use for this type of animation where it involves liquid and if you want to preview your HDRI in the preview section just click this little button scene world and scene lights as well and set up your camera that's the final thing so click control alt 0 number pad 0 uh, and if it's still not where you want it press N to pop up this little menu go to view and right here lock camera to view that should allow you to control the camera just like you would in the viewport I want it right there that should be pretty good and I don't want to see the background and it's kind of clipping it so I just want to extend the range of my camera right here extend it further out and then the plane I want to extend it further out because I don't want to see the background at all and once you got that just unlock it and you're good now we could get, uh, go back to working with the cube and everything else so in the domain let's see where it's at it's finished let's preview it okay uh, right here is pretty good time to make it so we're right here where it stabilizes at 180 now that we have that whenever you click on the cube uh we want to disable it so i'm going to save it here um as enabled and then go back all the be uh, all the way at the beginning save save it as well but this one i forgot to do something is unenable it cuz this is where we want the the cube to stop colliding so save it by pressing i on both and or you could right click it right click and add key add keyframe okay now that we have that uh, uh, if you want to do something else for one of my uh, for the video what I did was that little cube inside let me grab it a little cube inside whenever the cube uh, uh, right here what I did was I pressed I and then I increased it so in a span of time to around 240 I want this to be like 8 something extreme like that so it gets cool effect okay once that's finished you're practically done you just gotta preview it again uh, let me go into preview mode there you go just wait for it to finish uh, what you're doing is just previewing the effects because you're going to use a higher resolution. Uh, for me, I'm going to use 130 just for speed's sake. But what I would recommend for you to do was use 300 resolution. That's the resolution I used on the video and it looks pretty good. And if you don't want this uh, triangle looking shape, right click on it and then shade smooth that's way oh, okay yeah I see what I did I'm sorry about that I never actually set the uh, obstacle for this one so the water just passed through it um, sorry for any of you who had to redo the simulation to fix it
just gotta get a better look at it. Um, okay, now that we're back, as you can see, it's starting to look a lot better, but it's still going through the ground. That should be fixed with a higher resolution. I'm just doing 65 as a preview, but that looks pretty good. Um, what if I lower this a little bit? Okay, this is what it should look like. Um, I don't recommend lowering it because the cube would look like it's in midair, but I don't think that matters since the cube's invisible. So, I guess you can leave it lowered. Yeah, it's fine for that little bit of water. Okay, um, if you want a smaller simulation, just turn uh, make the 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 domain however you want it but this is just showing you how to make the cube falling and how to make everything so the way you want your simulation is up to you and uh what i just showed you is how to make the basics kind now that you saw your simulation uh it's time to just preview it so now that let's let's see how this turned out. Um, let's see how it look from this angle. I think that looks all right. It looks good enough to teach you how to make it. So after that, just reset your bake and use a higher resolution. So like I said, I'd recommend for you to use 300. I'm just gonna use 130 because I don't wanna wait a couple hours for this to finish. So yeah, I hope you liked the video and you learned a lot. Tell me anything I could do to improve my videos and like and subscribe.